Now we reach the crux of the matter. The basic idea here is that any inequality can be chalked up to systemic racism. We are now ghost hunting. Notice, they've said nothing in this video. Nothing. The simple assumption is that if more black people percentage-wise, that must be due to systemic racism and not due to the number of crimes being committed by individuals who make a decision to commit a crime. When it comes to representation, the truth is there are many, many black Americans in Congress. We've had a black president, president, president of the United States. People choosing to run and people choosing to vote, that is an aspect of American freedom. Kevin and Jamal live only a few streets away from each other. So how come they're growing up in such different worlds with such different opportunities for success? The answer has to do with America's history of systemic racism. Hell, I've been here all the time. And we've been Where were you? you okay. <clears throat> now, what do I have to say to you? The most advanced nation in the world. It has to be resolved. It has to be resolved because I want my children to have an answer. If not me, I personally prefer that I have an answer. You know, I don't have, you know, I, I like to think I don't have my lifetime to waste on this. Unfortunately, the biggest challenge with systemic racism is that there's no single person or entity responsible for it, which makes it very hard to solve. But I had no idea how bad things actually were until I saw this one graph. Researchers at Princeton University looked at more than 20 years worth of data to answer a pretty simple question. Does the government represent the people? Now, this is what they found. 